Today on The List, last minute gift ideas, unexpected joy that comes in the mail, and you've heard of a wine sommelier, we talk to a water sommelier. Water has taste and a story. Plus, how to put up the perfect Christmas tree. You'll want to cut about a half inch off the bottom. But up first, how to add sparkle to your holiday meals. It's your life, it's your list, and it starts right now. Hey guys, I'm Christina Guerrero. And I'm Jimmy Rhodes, and holiday time means gathering time. And there's an easy way to boost the festivity level of any party or dinner you're throwing. That's right, dress up your table using what you probably already have around the house. That's right, Jackie Denker has some holiday tablescapes that will definitely impress your guests. And that's our featured story at the top of the list. Hosting during the holidays means you have to work on making the event itself as memorable as the menu. I love tablescapes because they completely take an ordinary meal to something elevated and special. So like every night when you're at home, you're just having a normal average meal. No one's putting tablescapes up or if they are, they have way too much time on their hands. But for those out of the ordinary occasions, Stephanie Mullen is showing us how to create three different tablescapes. It adds a little magic to it and just makes it feel more holiday driven. First up, the farmhouse tablescape. The farmhouse decor is, you know, it's about a little bit more rustic. And it's perfect for this time of year because it's all about nostalgia, just like the holidays. They're about recreating old memories while creating new ones. So when you use the things that you already have, it just it adds another layer to those memories. So maybe use some old holiday themed plates that have been passed down. Then for the center of the table, you'll want to keep it pretty simple and grab items from nature. Stuff that you would find outside Side, earthy, light stems, maybe even some of the stems might be olive trees, and it's just not overdone. You can mix and match glasses. And then good placemats are always great. I love to use like a jute kind of placemat. It adds texture to a wooden table or even color, but you can mix and match those too. Next up, we're creating a table that is elegant and elevated. I always do a really nice, elegant, elevated theme as well, because then I get to use my grandmother's china, which is a lovely reminder of the fabulously dysfunctional <laughs> holiday gatherings of my youth, and I love that. Black plate chargers and gold silverware can keep your table looking classy. That more elegant look has the nicer napkins. It has the more elevated brass candlesticks. And an easy way to add in some pops of color. Use tangerines and oranges and pomegranates in different colors. No landfill, no excess amount of money. It's just reusable and I love that idea on tablescapes. And for our final table, we are keeping it simple and easy. I always like to do a tablescape as well that just you can do that's just stuff that's already in your cabinet because not everyone can go out and buy new stuff every year or even wants it to be that fancy. So use plates that you already have. Mixing and matching is encouraged. It's not important that it looks like perfect, it shouldn't be perfect. Put some flowers down the middle, a table runner, and a few candles. And, and it can be unconventional. It doesn't have to be something that you necessarily would normally have on the table. Creating tablescapes for the holiday season is at the top of the list. Now, the common belief seems to be that water should taste like, well, water, right? It's why a lot of people think plain H2O is boring and flavorless. Well, a certified water sommelier is here to set us straight and introduce us to the delicious world of water. If you think water's bland and lacks flavor, think again. Water is not just water. Water has taste and a story. Martin Riza is a certified water sommelier who's behind the 45-page water menu at one of LA's top restaurants. It's all about options in the hospitality industry. You have different wines, you have different liquors, you have different beers on tap. But when it comes to water, our most essential beverage, we don't even pay attention to it. And I thought, let's change that. He's treating our palate with three brands of water with unique flavors. But to understand where all that flavor comes from, let's go over TDS, which stands for Total Dissolved Solids. You can measure the mineral overall composition by TDS, minerals as salt. Every water has salts dissolved. The higher the number, the stronger the taste. The more salts are dissolved. For reference, good tap water ranges between 200 and 400 TDS. 
The first water we're tasting falls just above that from the Danish brand Iskilda. This water has more oxygen by nature than all other waters ever been found in Denmark. It's pulled from the Danish Lake Highland region and is notable for its subtle, sweet taste. I don't get a sense of mineral, and the other thing I don't get a sense of, I don't get a sense of it having gone through a lot of pipes. Sure, you could taste this water source, but you can also see it. What you just saw is oxygen. And it's very, very cold, that water, when it comes out of the ground. Cold water holds more oxygen than warm water does. We are not fish. We cannot access this oxygen. But I think it's unique to see that. Up next, let's try Three Bays Mineral Water, an Australian brand which amps up its TDS level to 1300. Holy cow, this tastes salty. This water is also notable for its thick texture. And that is again based just on the minerality. This water, the last time it was rainwater, was for around 2000 years ago. It's like an ancient source and it's built in mother nature. Correct. We're wrapping up our water tasting venture with the Spanish brand, Vichy Catalan. Vichy is natural current sparkling water. What I think is pretty fascinating, actually. And it contains the highest TDS of the group at approximately 3,000. The more I drink it, the more the saltiness comes out. So it has more electrolyte than some sport drinks. We're talking about water here from nature. And while it's fun to indulge in different tastes, know that your go-to choice of water is entirely up to you. Every water will hydrate you. You'll find the right water for you, and that is the best water. We're treading in uncharted waters to uncover the flavor potential of H2O. Christmas is coming fast, and if you haven't put up your tree yet, well, it is time to get busy. A surprising amount of detail goes into doing it right, so Teresa Strasser is looking at the do's and don'ts of setting up your Christmas tree. The tradition of Christmas trees comes from Germany, where they decorate with evergreen branches during the winter solstice. Eventually, they brought full trees into their homes, and as early as 1830, this tradition migrated to the U.S. It brings so many of us together, puts so many of us in the best of moods. John DeCosmo, president and founder of the Ulta Lit Tree Company, gave us some helpful do's and don'ts when it comes to the holiday tradition. Starting with artificial trees. The best style artificial tree bar none is the molded needle. The industry knocked off mother nature like she never thought she could be knocked off. That's the epitome of realism. But before you leave the house, don't forget to measure. Eight foot ceilings are quite the norm in the average house in the United States. And therefore, the seven and a half foot is the best selling tree. But just imagine an eight foot height ceiling where you did an eight foot tree. You've got no room for your tree topper. Once you pick your tree, fluff it up. We always say we never want a tree where the cat can jump through it for sport. And if your tree still doesn't look full, add garland from top to bottom. Open the branches and remember, those branches want to grow to the sky. Next, real Christmas trees. If the merchant didn't do it for you, you'll want to cut about a half inch off the bottom just to make sure that sap has not clogged our waterways. Putting the tree in water will also keep it fragrant for longer. And if you're using old, large incandescent lights, a la Chevy Chase in Christmas Vacation, remember, they're hot. Don't forget that that just dries out your tree earlier. So dispose of yours by December 26th or New Year's at the latest. <sighs> Lastly, Christmas tree lights. First thing, you've owned the set a couple of years, you're gonna put it out. Let's make sure there's no broken bulbs, crack sockets. However, if there is a problem, try products like the Light Keeper Pro for incandescent light set failure and the LED Keeper for LED lights. And when it comes to the amount of lights on your tree. A hundred mini lights per foot is the recommended rule. And I always say, if you're a uh, Christmas fanatic, you, you can double that. We're ringing in the holidays with Christmas trees. Still to come on the list, why tiny toys are so big this holiday season. All those classic toys and games you had as a kid, but zapped with a shrink ray. And meet the support dogs who lend a helping paw. Due to my autism, I will have text and she interrupts that. Plus, why indie musicians Tegan and Sarah got a TV show about their life. Are you guys twins? No. Yes. All that and more ahead on the list.
friends, welcome back. Oh my goodness. Well, the wish lists and budgets have been both nearly emptied for Christmas, right? But guess what? Now it's time to stuff the stockings. Yes, and they should be fun. So the last thing you want to do is stuff them with oranges and underwear. Oh no. In case you need a little help, Jackie Denker found a few last minute stocking stuffers that are as nifty as they are thrifty. Time is running out and budgets are stretched, but there are still stockings to fill. If Santa needs some suggestions on some great stocking stuffers, there's plenty of awesome toys out there that you can still find. James Son, editor-in-chief of The Toy Book, is starting us out with the world's smallest toys and games. Think about all those classic toys and games you had as a kid but zapped with a shrink ray. Everything from the classic Tonka truck to Barbie and beyond is available and they really work. So this little Viewmaster right here, I can look at it, I can click through the slides and I can see things just like the original. There are also games like Operation, Clue and Battleship. Here's your battle station. Find them for about 10 bucks and under online and in stores. Next up, Drop a little nostalgia into that stocking with a mini lava lamp. We're talking the lava lamps of the 60s that have never gone away, and the folks at Schilling have you covered. You can choose from mini models like the Vortex or opt for the super small LED lava light. Find them online for about $10 to $20. Tap, 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 tap. The Tap Tap Smart Fidget Toy is next. Tap, 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 tap. It's a fidget toy, but has a little something extra. 16 light up touch pads and built in games like Stop and Go. All pixels are red to start. Tap the green pixels as they appear and increase in speed. There are multiple games you can play with in here, and these are perfect for a stocking. They're 15 bucks, available at flycatcher.toys. We'll top our stockings up with pop culture themed minifigures from Play Mobile, featuring the A-Team and Star Trek. We got Mr. Spock right here. Hey, you love the A-Team? B.A. Baracus, he's gonna pity the fool that doesn't have one of these in their stocking this season. And that's a tip to you from me, Mr. T. You can also get a collector set of Star Trek minifigs, Sans Keychain. Featuring four characters from the classic 1960s TV series. Find these from $7 to $20 online. The great thing about all of these awesome stocking stuffers is that you should be able to still get these things before the big holidays arrive. Topping our holiday shopping with last minute stocking stuffers. Well, it's a season of giving and looking out for others. So let's highlight positive stories that show that, whether through words or actions. They also prove kindness wins. All right, first up is Operation Santa, a tradition by the United States Postal Service going strong for over 100 years. Began way back in 1912. We've been doing this a long time. The program allows people to adopt a letter addressed to Santa in order to help fulfill the holiday wishes of children and families in need from across the U.S. It could be simple stuff, a bicycle or some clothes or some socks or anything. You'd be surprised what you can do to help people out for the holidays. According to our sister network newsy, the deadline to adopt a letter is December 19th. Learn more at uspsoperationsanta.com. Do love that. Up next is a wholesome TikTok account with a very simple premise to remind its followers, hey, you are a good mom. Parenting is tough, kids are hard, and it's okay. But just know you did a good job the Good Mom Project was created by Steve Shenberg, a husband and dad based out of Chicago. He posts daily videos with positive affirmations to reassure moms that even on those days where everything seems to go left, you are doing all right. And it's okay if you lost your cool, and it's okay if you get frustrated. That means you're normal. Don't be so hard on yourself. You're a good mom. Way to go. You did a great job today. Let's go. Well, it always feels nice to hear that, that's for sure. And finally, a Wisconsin-based nonprofit looking out for young adults and children with autism. There we go. Good girl. Dogs and Vest was founded five years ago and trains dogs to become service animals that will help calm their owner if they're feeling stressed or help identify and stop self-harming behavior. Due to my autism, I will have tics, so I start hitting my head when I'm stressed or something like that. And 
making noise and she interrupts that. We hear words like they make me feel safe and brave, they're my best friend, they don't judge me and so it, it's a real confidence booster for the kids. After a two-year training is complete, the dogs are donated to each child. You can learn more at dogsinvest.org. So cool. And those are three stories that prove kindness wins. Lots more coming up. Stay with us. We have a quick list of tips to attract more love into your life with the author of You Are More Than You Think You Are, Kimberly Snyder. Whether you use a dating app or not, it's about the energy you come into something with. First, take care of yourself. It means that we are showing up for ourselves and we are giving these acts of love. It's not dormant anymore, and so it does become more attractive. It becomes part of you. Second, practice gratitude. Gratitude is also a very powerful practice for amplifying and attracting love in our life people will feel that on you they'll feel like i want to get to know them and that will draw more potential partners to you and third be kind whether it's being extra kind to the barista opening the door for someone whatever it is in all these ways we are spreading a source of love and the source of love will always attract love for more list tips head to the listtv.com We're back. Now, you've probably seen siblings in bands together, but we bet you haven't seen identical twin sisters do it and launch an empire that includes 10 albums, an award-winning book, and a TV show. Hattie D. Jamal introduces us to Tegan and Sarah. Canadian identical twin sisters Tegan and Sarah Quinn have released 10 albums since 1999 and were Grammy nominated for their DVD and live album, Get Along. Do you want to sing? We spoke with them about their impressive and inspiring career. It is really quite incredible. Their latest album is titled Cry Baby. You're like a tattoo, something I can't I think that people should listen to I Can't Grow Up. I think it captures the pop influences that have worked their way into our music, but also captures the sort of like youthful, effervescent, kind of high energiness of our band. It checks a lot of boxes. Beyond music, in 2019, they released an award-winning memoir, which has now become a new show, High School. Tegan and Sarah, doesn't even rhyme, your parents blew it. I do think it's very unique. Twin sisters who have been in a band for 20 years, coming out story, their origin story of the band. It's a pretty good hook. Tegan didn't go to school today, left me all alone to play. I think it's also really relatable, even though those like individual things are really unique, not just to teenagers, but to, I think, anybody who is sort of searching and trying to figure out their identity and how they connect both to the world and they're also themselves. I think it's better having it be our secret. Totally. With 23 years together as a band, there's a lot to learn from their journey. We're living proof that you should pursue what feels good, you know, and if it's the arts, go wild. We meet people of every single age who come up and say, I just figured out who I was yesterday. It just takes time sometimes, you know, and I think taking that pressure off of yourself to get it all figured out tomorrow, you should just always go in the direction of what feels right and feels good, and sometimes the direction changes. I love you. I don't need a ring to prove that you're worthy. You're under my skin. You can watch High School now on Amazon Freebie. What happened? You stopped waiting. The incredible career of Tegan and Sarah. Ah, uh, Tegan and Sarah are making Canucks everywhere proud. Canucks. Yeah, that's a nickname for Canadians. Yes, yes, yes. I wonder, do the Canadians approve? You know, I'm not sure. Huh, well, it turns out that nicknames can have a powerful impact on your relationships. Really? Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Last on our list is next.
Welcome back, everyone. It's time for what's last on our list. And KG, you sent me a link to an article on Best Life, 181 nicknames for your boyfriend, endearments he'll love. Yeah, you know, come to think of it, my husband, Gibby, used to call me Liebchen when we first started <laughs> dating. It's the German word for a person that is very dear to another. I didn't realize Gibby was fluent in German. Well, he's not. Maybe German beer, right? But come to think of it, he actually doesn't call me that anymore. Okay, well, according to the article, a study published in the Journal of Social and Personal Relationships, and yeah, that's a thing, says that using nicknames is associated with higher levels of marital satisfaction. Oh. So you got to get back on that pet name train. Okay, well, sounds like I'm in the market for some new names. Go ahead and go. Okay, well, from the cute category, how about Honey Bunny? Sounds like a breakfast treat. <laughs> okay, from the goofy category, how about Squishy? No, I, I don't really know how I feel about that one. Yeah, you know what? I think that one could really backfire. How about from the romantic category, boo? You're saying it like Halloween. It's boo, which is what I call my boys. Okay, well, then definitely not romantic. How about food-related, <laughs> tater tot? You know, I love tater tots too much to risk tainting them if we ever had a nasty <laughs> fight, right? You know what? That's just good planning. Okay, how about you? Have you ever had a romantic nickname for yourself? You know, the nicknames that have been given to me straddle the line between endearment and insult. Oh, Jimmy. I'm going to light a candle for you. <laughs> Thank you. And that's what's last on our list. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Tomorrow on The List, why it's no longer tacky to talk about money. Beginning those conversations changes the game. And make your holidays extra fancy without the extra cost. Anyone can do this? Anyone can do it at home. Plus, why inexpensive beer is still a favorite. Nothing lands like a Corona with a yeah, Absolutely. That's tomorrow here on The List.